All right, guys. So here we are with our third in the series, and essentially we're not going to look at anything overly new. Like this should be reasonably familiar to you, or nothing too surprising anyway. And we're going to look at food chains and food webs. Okay, so by the end of this, you should understand how energy flows through an ecosystem, and you should be able to explain graphically, so using pictures, um, the way that the energy flows through an ecosystem. All right, so energy and matter flow through an ecosystem, through the diets of, of different animals and etc. And plants too, for that matter. Um, energy from the sun is converted into sugars, okay, in producers, and this then flows through the animal kingdom with, you know, which act as consumers, so all the animals act as consumers. Uh, for example, over here we have a kookaburra, and he's chowing down on a blue kingfisher. A kookaburra is a kingfisher bird, but it doesn't eat fish. It tends to eat other birds, which is really, really cool. Or snakes, or snakes, but it eats other birds, and that's awesome. So, trophic levels. This, again, uh, trophic levels are the food levels in an ecosystem. Should we do a bit of revision here. Um, you've got your producers, so these are the organisms which produce the energy through photosynthesis. We have plants, algae, phytoplankton, and some bacteria that tend to do this. Consumers, uh, they're organisms that consume energy, all right? So we've got animals, zooplankton, most bacteria. Uh, and then we've got decomposers, which is we haven't talked about that as much. And they're organisms that break down dead organisms, basically, and that's fungi, bacteria, scavengers. So you've got this dead thing lying on the ground, and if it wasn't for decomposers, it would just sit there forever, but it doesn't, because they come along and they chew it away. Well, maybe not forever, but yeah. So, efficiency. Not sure that's spelled correctly at all. Um, so only about 10% of energy and mass from one level is transferred to the next. Okay, and so that means each one loses about 90% as waste. So this doesn't mean your line at the top here is one kilogram. What it means is that it has, it gets about one kilo, for every thousand, for every ton of grass, it gets about one kilo of mass. And that's because it's all, well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, energy does the same thing, it works on the same scale. So if your phytoplankton produces about a thousand units of energy, by the time it gets to the tuna, it's down to 0 0.1. Um, so each loser level loses about 90 times the mass, 90 percent of the mass as waste. So you know defecations and, and whatnot. And each level loses about 90 percent of the energy as heat, sound, running around, all that sort of stuff. So that's not passed on to the next level of food. Um, all right. So food chain. Two words, by the way. It's basically a simple representation of these trophic levels. And the energy flow, this is really important, is shown by an arrow pointing towards the thing being eaten. To the thing doing the eating. So the arrow goes with energy. Cool. Um, and basically, here we go. I changed that from a shrew to a, I don't know, a bush rat, and we're good. Um, so grass gets eaten by the grasshopper, which then gets eaten by the bush rat, not a shrew, which then gets eaten by the owl. Okay, so cool. Food web, same sort of deal, but a bit more complex. You have multiple pathways through the ecosystem. Can be a bit confusing. So we look here, and um, here's our sunlight, boom. So we've got these two producers here, and these are all the different things that can eat it, blah, blah, blah. Now, there's a better way to do this. The best way to do it is to organize it in order of trophic levels. Producer at the bottom, decomposer at the top. Just makes it simpler. This is the way you will do it every single time. So, it means it also means it doesn't have a very even spread, and that's fine. Okay, so you've got your plants, and then you've got all your herbivores, then your primary consumers, then your secondary consumers, and then your tertiary consumers. Now, the hark here, or the owl, whatever, what's a hark? Um, the owl, it's going to eat the mouse. So, it can technically be there. However, however, it will also eat the bird. So, the owl goes higher up. And that's where we're at. And here's a picture of some dingoes eating a cow. That's cool. All right, see you 